And now let's actually start with the uh, project infrastructure talk. So uh, I think I don't have to introduce myself. I did that before. Um, I'm Lars from Osnabrück. And so let's dive right into this. The idea for this talk is that we had, uh, we always have several people on list uh, who are quite uh, surprised that we have a lot of architecture for Opencast and uh, for what we all have and what they can use in uh, testing Opencast, in uh, developing for Opencast, and uh, in communicating with each other. So the main idea for this talk is to just show you what we have and what you can use. And of course, there are different ideas uh, or different use cases for uh, development and uh, communication and so on. And I will just go through these, uh, these uh, different categories. So um, first of all, I guess I have to thank four, no, uh, five uh, institutions. And these are basically the five institutions uh, providing architecture or infrastructure for Opencast at the moment. So this is the University of Saskatchewan uh, in Canada. This is Harvard DCE. This is the University of Osnabrück. And this is the ETH in Zurich. Um, there's also Switch. I added them later because uh, they are not actually hosting any uh, infrastructure right now but they will provide a high-performance um, test server or test cluster for the upcoming release cycle. So in the public QA phase, we will have a high-performance uh, test cluster on the uh, Swiss cloud. They got a new one, and we can use it before the... Uh, basically, we can test it. Um, Going forward, let's start with uh, what we have for development. And the first thing we have is uh, Jira. Jira is basically a ticket management system for us. Uh, Jira is actually a lot more, but we basically use it to track our uh, bugs. So if at any point in time you notice something is not working in Opencast, it's good to point out that to developers. But please also add a uh, Jira ticket for that. Uh, it actually helps to track down things, uh, see what's actually going wrong in, um, in a release. And you can also have a look at different releases and uh, uh, things that have been fixed or filed against these uh, releases. The second thing that we have is, of course, a Bitbucket. Bitbucket is where we host our code. Um, so if you want to get access to the code, if you want to clone it, if you want to modify it, uh, this is basically where we would go. And um, all of this is sponsored. I said before that we have these four institutions or five institutions providing the infrastructure. We also have some companies uh, who give all the project, uh, products for free for us. And Atlassian is one of them. And Atlassian is sponsoring Jira. And Atlassian is also sponsoring Bitbucket for us. Um, so that we can have uh, a code hosted there and so on. So uh, if you're interested in code, you want to go to Bitbucket. The third thing we have, and uh, that is what uh, our uh, own institutions uh, host, is our Nexus infrastructure. So if you build Opencast, uh, your Maven will actually download a lot of uh, Java dependencies, and they are hosted on uh, these Nexus servers, on these Maven repositories. And we have a GRIP-based architecture for this. So if you're, for example, you're from Canada and you want to build Opencast, then the files are actually served from the University of Saskatchewan. And if you're from Germany, then the things will be served from the University of Osnabrück and so on. So uh, we built that on our own. And uh, this has sped up uh, Opencast build quite a bit, especially if you build it for the first time. And of course, if you're interested to host your own, uh, you can do that. We have uh, actual documentation for that. Um, well, the next thing, and that's uh, probably mo more important for a lot of you, is that we have test servers. And these test servers are really meant to be test servers. So if you 
want to try out new versions, if you want to uh, test your capture agent you're just writing, if you uh, want to just show someone what Opencast is, you can always use these test servers. Uh, basically, the rules for using these test servers is only, uh, uh, are only you can, uh, you should not expect them to work at all time. I mean, someone can break them. It's okay if they break them, it's totally fine. Just let me know that it's broken and I can fix it later on. Um, then, yeah, basically the second rule is let us know when you break them. And uh, maybe let us know if you're trying to do uh, load testing or something like that. So if you're ingesting uh, a terabyte of video data over weeks, let us know in advance. But apart from that, please feel free to use them at any time. So that's basically what we have for development. And uh, now I'll say some words about distribution. And there are basically two parts of distribution. Um, the one we had since the beginning of the project is the source distribution, and uh, which basically means you go to Bitbucket, you check out the repository, which uh, has been SVN in the past and for the last couple of years is you now Git, so you can just get the source from there. Uh, but can also download the source torvalds, and of course then you have to build uh, Opencast on your own. But uh, over the last couple of years there have been two uh, additional uh, ways of distributing Opencast, and these are the binary distributions. Um, one you have, I've already mentioned in my first talk, uh, this is the RPM packages. You can get, um, tomorrow there will be a talk by Greg Logan, who talks about uh, packages for different uh, operating systems, because there will be uh, Debian packages for Opencast in the future, so probably Debian and uh, Ubuntu and so on. Um, and uh, we have seen, you know that graph, uh, you've, we have seen a lot of uptake on these binary distributions in the last couple of years. What we'll also do first time with 2.2, at least that's planned at the moment, is that we will uh, hand out binary Tor balls. Um, since we are now using Apache Caraf as uh, basic uh, architecture for all the IH stuff. There's, uh, we get out these binary distributions and we will uh, just distribute them using uh, Bitbucket. So hopefully that will make things easier for the people, especially if you're on, I don't know, weird operating systems that he, he knows what I'm talking about. Okay, um, then the next thing I want to talk about is uh, communication. And uh, communication is basically the idea, how do we as Opencast community interact with each other? And we have several ways of uh, doing that. I mean, sure, you can write a ticket, but uh, there's a high chance that if you want to have a fast answer, that that's not the best way to do things. Um, what we have is mailing lists, and we have actually a bunch of different mailing lists. So we have uh, matter.opencast.org, which is the developer list, so if you're uh, running into problems uh, adding stuff to, uh, so adding code to Opencast, uh, you want to probably want to hit that list. We have the users list, which is basically, uh, well, if you have problems uh, setting up Opencast, you want to go to that list. Uh, all of these lists are uh, there as Google Groups, so you can use them as forum, by the way. So you don't really have to write emails if you don't like that. Um, well, then there's a community at opencast.org, which is basically an announcement list. So if the board sends out something, they usually also use this one. So this is really a low traffic uh, mailing list. And if you don't want to get a, to get a lot of emails, uh, you can still be on this list. Uh, there's a list especially for the German-speaking community. I thought I'd add, it, uh, add that one since we're in Germany. And, uh, well, finally, there's one really, really, really important list. Every adopter should be on this list. And this is a security announcement mailing list. 
So if at any point we, uh, as development team, notice that something is wrong with the security of OpenCast, uh, we try to fix, be silent about this first. We try to fix this problem. And once we have a fix for the problem, we will announce the problem, including a patch, and how to uh, deal with it on your system on this list. So uh, this is a really low traffic mailing list. Uh, I think on this mailing list there are about eight to 10 emails so far, but uh, it's a really important mailing list. So please uh, sus subscribe to this list if you haven't so far. Um, what else is there? Well, there we basically since the beginning of the project have a chat. Uh, it's um, router op How do you call router in English? Hashtag opencast, thanks. Um, it's hashtag opencast on Freenode. There is also a web client for this, so if you're interested, there are always uh, some people online, I guess, uh, Probably there are usually 20 people, and five of them are actually online. But uh, it's a good way to uh, easily contact some developers and asking for stuff. Um, well, then we have uh, meetings. We have fairly regular meetings, and especially we have, apart from these conferences, which are we, uh, yearly, uh, we have two online meetings. One of them is a technical meeting, which you don't have to be an uh, OpenCast developer to go this, to this meeting. It's free for everyone, uh, so everyone is allowed to join. And uh, it's also meant for administrators and so on. So we talk about technical stuff of, of, uh, related to OpenCast, but uh, by all means, if you're not a developer, you can still join. And this is a weekly meeting. We use our big blue button for that. And uh, well, if you're interested, feel free to join. As an adopter, there's also a monthly meeting, uh, which is held on the last Wednesday of each month. And uh, this is more for user stories, for experience with different capture agents, and so on. And it will always be announced on the user list in advance and there will be a call for topics on this. So again, if you're interested, uh, join us there. Finally, OpenCast is, has some social media interactions. So uh, we ha do have a Twitter account, we do have a Facebook account, uh, and there are regular posts to these accounts with what's going on in the community. And then finally, there is a YouTube account, which is, I guess, mostly used for uh, recordings from conferences. So I think there are some a few additional uh, recordings, like um, the new features of a release or something like that may be highlighted there. And this might be interesting for you as well. OK. Um, of course, there are things still missing. Uh, you may have been to the talk from Tobias this uh, morning, and uh, he talked about tasks and automatically executing tasks. So one thing we are what we are still missing is continuous integration service. We had them at one point. We had problems with them. We had to get rid of them. We want to have new ones. But uh, it's still not there, and hopefully we'll get them. Um, also, for the uh, public QA, we hope to get a better system of actually running these manual tests. And uh, thanks to Pepper Pascal Gruber, we hopefully, uh, sorry, thanks to Pepper Pascal Gruber and from uh, Andy from uh, Extron, we hopefully uh, get up test trails for the upcoming release. But this is still something we don't have at the moment. So these are, these are the two things we want to have. Um, so, if you can't remember all of what I've just talked about, uh, we actually do have documentation about our infrastructure and whom to contact when there's something wrong with the infrastructure or if you want to push something to certain uh, channels. And it's in the developer documentation and you can find it, uh, uh, well, there. Um, that's basically it.
Uh, of course, I did not list all of our infrastructure. There are still other things like crowd info translations, like the pull request filter, like, um, well, our documentation itself. I didn't actually list it apart from this link. Um, but I think uh, you get a bit of an overview about what we have. So, are there any questions? Okay. Yeah. Uh. Just one question. So uh, the most important thing missing seems really to be this continuous integration server stuff. Is there a shadow or when do you think uh, if and when will they be available? Um, until yesterday, I would have said uh, they will be available once I have time to actually get them running again. Um, something happened between yesterday and today that make me say that there might be a possibility that we get them running fairly quick, but I can't say more about that. Ask me in person. I can tell you uh, more about that later. But yeah. Okay, it's done when it's done. <laughs> Actually, yes. I'm sorry about that, uh, but. Okay, then I guess I hand over to uh, Michael.